it's not a closed border. Uh, you can only close it by having the resources to secure it and also have the systems in place. This administration did not step up and respond in an appropriate way and that opened the door and that sent the signal that uh, it is an open border. So Arkansas's Governor Asa Hutchinson there on a ride along with Texas state troopers. That was last night and he took a moment to you know, kind of express the fresh criticism now that he has for President Biden's immigration policies and the chaos at the southern border. He's not alone in all this. Now a group of Republican governors is headed to survey the situation for themselves due there tomorrow. They're going to renew their calls for President Biden to do something about what's unfolding there. However, Texas Governor Greg Abbott is not waiting for the White House. He's preparing the state National Guard along the border as the steady stream of migrants is not slowing down. He's going to send them there. Look at them. They're readying. People who live and work in the area are fed up. I feel it's the fault of the president. They felt that they had been promised by the president that they would come to United States citizens. It's been mounting bit by bit. It's not just a thing that happened like over the course of just one week. Done nothing. Zero. Zelch. They must feel abandoned. I want to bring into focus now former acting ICE director Tom Homan, Fox News contributor. Tom, literally it must feel to them that no one is hearing their cries for help inside the White House. No, you said it right, Harris. They have been abandoned. So have the men and women of the Border Patrol. They've been abandoned. The secretary won't admit us to crisis why these men and women are working their butts off 24-7. The president had his, his first speech said, you know, Border Patrol would watch children dying of starvation on riverbanks, did nothing about it. These are men and women in green, patriots, American citizens that, that saved over 8,000 lives this year. Children drowning in the river, or people abandoned in the desert. Mm -hmm. One thing I want to say, though, is if, if, to look at this. The bottom line is the Trump administration handed President Biden the most secure border in my career, which spans 35 years. I worked for six presidents. Illegal immigration down 83 percent, most secure border I've ever seen. Why would any incoming president want to come in and say and tear it down? There is no downside in a secure border. There's no downside in less illegal immigration, less drug flow, uh, make, taking money out of the cartel's hand. It, 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 it's, it's ridiculous that any president will come in and say, I want a less secure border. It's just ridiculous. Six presidents, 35 years, and this is the worst you've ever seen it. And, and yet we hear from the Border Patrol Chief Rodney Scott, who was booted, saying this about terror threats at the border. So the topic's even bigger. Let's watch. We have nation state threats. We have terrorist threats. We can't get into in this type of a forum, but they're real. They exist and they want to come across that border. Statistically, it always includes rapists, murderers, potential terrorists every single year. To think that there's not just as bad or worse people and those getting away would be naive. Tom, I have to think in your 35 years as you described them, this is what you're talking about by the worst you've ever seen it. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad Roddy. Roddy's a good friend of mine. He's an American patriot. I've been saying since I've been on this network almost three years that a, a, a open border means terrorists have a, a, is vulnerable to terrorism. A lot of terrorists come up to the Daring Gap in Panama. The Panama fish just said they got a huge surge coming our way. Mm -hmm. How many... How many known suspected terrorists are going to embed themselves in these groups? The, uh, the, the, daring, the daring gap is the best known pathway for those who want to come here and do harm. And, and Rodney's right. By, by numbers, the data shows 20% of, of, of border patrol apprehensions, 20% by an average, have a criminal history. Now, there's almost 350 to 400,000 gotaways. These are people the border patrol couldn't arrest because they're tied up with the family groups. That's based on same sensor traffic, camera traffic, drone traffic. So if you got 400,000 gotaways and you say 20% of that, I'm not a mathematician. That's like 80,000 criminals that might have crossed the border and not been stopped. So this border is vulnerable. It's vulnerable to, you know, fentanyl, 92,000 overdose deaths in this country. This bo an open border is a national security crisis, and I'm glad Rodney Scott's speaking out. You know, you, you mentioned the situation with Panama, and one thing that President Trump had at the time were all these deals in, you know, the Northern Triangle country, so on and so forth. Do we have enough friendships with people down there that they would look for the bad guys among them, or are they just floating these people through like, next, just head to America? 
Panama, we have, you know, ICE has a great relationship with Panama. I was down there meeting with those officials. We have actually stopped known and suspected terrorism right there in the Daring Gap, mm -hmm. and were able to deport them back to their homeland before they got to the United States. But their, their goal was to get to the United States. We caught some, but how many didn't we catch? Because you don't catch everybody. Like right. I said, 350,000 to 400,000 gotaways this year alone. Who were they? Tom Homan, thank you for your time and your expertise. Appreciate it.